Let's get to another guy who is who we thought he was, and that is Kayla Williams, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner. Fifth career game at USC with four passing touchdowns, no interceptions. It was a 56 to 28 win for him over San Jose State. So, Sam Macho, I want to come to you on this one because you said last week one of the things that he could do to continue to improve is not make costly mistakes, make good decisions. What did you think about the decision making that we saw from him in this game? I loved it, but only because it was Caleb Williams. There was that first touchdown that he threw where there was a bot snap. The ball was fumbled. It was a low snap. And most quarterbacks, some quarterbacks would have tried to fall on the ball. Others would have thrown it away. Caleb Williams had the wherewithal not only to pick up the ball, but find his receiver down the field and throw a 70-yard bomb for a touchdown. That's what makes Caleb Williams great. He has supreme confidence in his abilities, but also supreme confidence in the ability of his playmaking wide receivers. Now, that could prove costly when you get overconfident, but I don't think there's a level of overconfidence for Caleb's because he's just that good. I, I think he's an, ap an absolute magician, guys. I mean, I, I, when, when, what yeah. he's able to do with the instinctive athleticism, um, we just saw a clip right there where he just kind of slowly backed away from a free rusher off the edge, changed his arm angle to get the ball out, and then everything he does is decisive, anticipatory, right? So it's very difficult to get a direct shot on him because he's going to get the ball out of his hands. And when you do get near him, his ability to create with his feet on his own and extend plays has everybody in the stadium holding their breath. I, I just think he's an absolute difference maker. He's definitely a difference maker. And that botched snap that you guys mentioned and then all of a sudden – Gets it off, turns into a pass. Pretty impressive stuff from him. I mean, I was just sitting there like, week zero, we're doing this already. Good stuff from him. Lukes, it wasn't just him that had my jaw on the ground after that play, though. There's another player you've been trying to tell people to get ready for this freshman. What did you like about what we saw from Zachariah Branch, and why did you know he was special? Well, he number one, he, he was moving at a pace that made everybody else look like they were in quicksand. He I mean, did, yeah. He was just absolutely – he looked like a human blur. On the tape, his ability to get from zero to 60 is unbelievable. He's a 10, 300 meter guy. He's extremely mature. Our staff went back and forth about him in last year's class because he doesn't have ideal measurables. If there's one thing you're going to say, well, I wish he had this, you'd say, I wish he was a little bit taller, okay? But at the end of the day, you, 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 you sit there and say, well, all of the other stuff is so good and it is so elite. I'll say something right here, and I, and I truly mean this. Outside of Caleb Williams, he might be the best football player they have on that team. I mean, he's, he changes the way you defend the field. He changes the kicking game. He flips field position, and he can score in the blink of an eye. First player for USC with a receiving touchdown and a kickoff return touchdown in a single game since 2016. And he is just a freshman getting started and already high praise from you. Let's flip over to maybe something that is, I think, not going to get quite as high praise because you're going to talk about – they are who we said they were. Is that also true, you guys, for USC's defense? We talked about it a little bit last week in this offseason. We know what happened last year. Last year, it was uh, it was tough for them. On this year, not as much better Saturday. Stopping the run in particular, a struggle. The Trojans allowed 7.3 yards per carry, and they allowed 5 yards per carry last season. Lugs. Do we, did we get what we thought we were getting, or is it just getting started and it's going to get better for this USC defense? I, I, to be honest with you, I wish it was going to be different, but we saw pretty much of the same from what we saw a year ago. And uh, it's, it's, it's kind of alarming because they're so good on offense, but there's no balance within the roster. SC, to make a college football playoff, doesn't have to be an elite team on defense. Just be a competent one. Be a competent one, and, I, and that's, that's what it's all about. So, to me, uh, I, I do think it's concerning. Poor tackling once again. Uh, we saw it all year long, and, and I said this all throughout the month of August on this program, too. Keep in mind, SC last year was plus 22 in turnover margin. They're not going to duplicate that again this year, and that's going to be problematic as well. So, Sam, I don't really know what the answer is here, but just a competent level of defense – puts them in the national title conversation, but that's not where they are as a football team right now. Yeah, I, I played in college for Will Muschamp. He was my defensive coordinator. He's been the co-defensive coordinator at Georgia for the last several years, right? That vaunted Georgia number one defense over and over again. He's the brains behind that defense. 
he and many other coordinators would talk about building a fence. Like that's what you want to do as a defense, right? You all play as one unit, not individuals, but playing as one. And when you watch this USC defense, uh, you don't see them playing as a unit. You see one guy making a play, but then another guy outside of his gap. You see one guy winning his one-on-one, -on -one, then another player who doesn't keep contain. And so you also see one player having good leverage and then him not trusting his other teammate to keep his leverage on the inside versus on the outside. So what that means is when there comes a tackling situation, it doesn't have to always be a one-on-one. -on -one. You can actually communicate with your teammates, stay in your gap, stay outside, keep contained. And that's what we're not seeing with this USC's defense. And so they are as advertised and advertisement was very, very low. Well, as I'm looking at their schedule, it's got Nevada, Stanford, ASU, Colorado, and Arizona before they play Notre Dame. Maybe a little bit of time to figure things out and settle things in on defense before they get to some more of those elite offenses that they will see later on in the season. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.